All right, boys, it's Wednesday with a W-I. That's how I look at it. How, how dare you assume my gender? Wins the... Win the day. <laughs> how dare Win you? the day. Uh, going to the Sweet 16, y'all excited? I'm pumped, man. I'm super excited. I've never been to a Sweet 16 game before. This will be our second time seeing North Carolina, right? That is true. We're going to see North Carolina, North Bama. Carolina, Alabama. Baycott didn't break the floor this Maybe time. Maybe Clemson, Arizona. Baycott did break the floor last Sounds kind of wonderful. I will say, you know what's crazy about being in, in Nashville is that you just... I always get surprised by going to new places. Like, sometimes you don't know what to expect. Like, last night, went to a place thinking, hey, this may be, like, you know, just your typical sports bar, hangout type place. Man, I was, like, getting in a time machine. Like, I'm not going to say the name of it. Like, had a great time. Well, I was, like, just waiting for, like, Abe Lincoln to walk out and, like, say what's up. That's how— We all related to John Wilkes Booth. It was so a, it was a house— it was, oh, a, no. yeah. it, was a, it was a house that was built in, like, the 1820s. Like, just made out of just solid, just oak. You know, like, it'll be there for thousand years. Stand the test of time. Unlike what we have today, which, like, all this, the buildings will just crumble in, like, a hundred years. Sadly. I know. I wonder how long the spheres can stay on Vegas. NFL owners approved new kickoff rules. Great. John Calipari returns to coach Kentucky basketball, and they're all excited, kind of. And the Titans signed the Jarius Sneed to a four-year deal. We're going to break it all and more and take down and more. Take your phone calls and more. I'm Jay Crane. Welcome to Crane & Company and more. Now, we all know football is America's most popular sport right now, and a lot would have to happen in a short time for people to just totally stop watching. In college football, we've seen monumental shifts with NIL and the transfer portal, but people still watch in droves, and it's only getting more popular. We've seen the NFL add games, change their playoff structure, move teams, and people are still nuts about it. But if there are any existential threats to football's over your overall popularity, I believe they include these two things. One, taking political stances or denouncing patriotism. The only thing people are more passionate about than their football team is their love for their country or their political affiliation. We see it all the time. We saw it with the Kaepernick situation and taking knees during the national anthem. This kind of showed a little bit of a chink in the overall armor of football. And there are people that are still now just coming back to the game because of it. The second existential threat is changing the rules of the game so much that the game becomes unrecognizable. Football is a gladiator sport. And to be honest, we love it because of the brutality and the physicality. It's our strongest and fastest men running into each other at full speed. The more we try to control the brutality of the collisions, the more we are sacrificing to the overall essence of why we're attracted to the game. Now, we're seeing those changes with the new rules on how to tackle someone. You can't really hit them anywhere, and now you can't tackle them from the side or behind because you'll get accused of a hip drop tackle. If you even whisper at a quarterback or blink at him twice before a Friday, they send you straight to Guantanamo Bay now. And yesterday, they just announced a total overhaul to kickoffs. Now, I get trying to be safer, and there are ways through equipment to mitigate some risk. But we don't need to sacrifice the physicality of the game for safety. These guys know when you sign up to play what risks that come along with it. It's one of the reasons they get paid so well. We pay people more to do dangerous jobs. Just ask underwater welders or astronauts who we really just strap to a bomb to shoot to a place we don't know where anything is. Now, these are the only two things that in my opinion can bring down what is by far and away America's present time. And I hope we don't totally destroy our game in the name of quote unquote, saving it. We're gonna bring in former quarterback, David Cohn, former Michigan quarterback, David Cohn, former Western State Colorado wide receiver, Blaine Crane. <clears throat> and David, again, I'm not saying we don't adjust as new equipment comes along where we can lessen the, the blow to people's heads when they get hit hard. But now, with the new kickoff rule, with all we're seeing, with trying to mitigate every single risk, 
we're going to shelter ourselves out of the sport. I really believe mm. that. That's one of the two biggest threats of, of a nuclear destruction. <laughs> Well, I'll be saying my piece on this uh, on a certain segment a little bit later. Yeah. But I, like I didn't old, mean to steal any of your thoughts. But like old school, I really have nothing else to add. That answer was I blacked out. Perfect. I think everybody should be standing up applauding uh, Jake Crane right now for that answer. But it really is true. And it's not just happening in football. This pursuit of safety is happening in all forms of life. I think the book, The Coddling of the American Mind, does a great job of breaking this down. It's just extra weird to see in a sport that is the modern day gladiator sport. We're <laughs> supposed to run That UFC, right? You would say those two. True, yeah. But I mean, it's it's like I, I can't believe what I'm hearing when I hear things like you know lessening contact or you know limiting uh, the contact that you have running down on kickoff. It's just it really is kind of crazy to hear. the 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 big thing too is like I understand the NFL wants to open up to new markets, uh, expand in Europe and Asia, and get you know a billion more pe- eyeballs yeah. on the. I want Crane like, Company to expand in Asia. I would love that as well. Oh, they love us in North you know, Korea. The I am four, learning four Mandarin. I'm like learning Japanese West. so that I can be Shohei's new interpreter. Oh, me but, so sorry. Sorry. You're never gonna. Be <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. Yeah, that's a good start. Uh, you're never gonna out soccer soccer for the rest of the world. Yeah. You already have soccer, so like, look, you can make it two hand touch. You can turn it into flag football. The rest of the world is already falling in love with soccer. Keep what Americans love about football. And, and Blaine, maybe we need to explain to people who don't know. I know we have clips of, of yeah. the the new kickoff and stuff like that. But isn't it ironic that we we this is just how ass backwards we are right now. I want everybody to just think about this for a second. We're trying to take, we're taking kickoff, basically the collisions out of kickoff with the new rule and for the name of safety, right? It's all about safety. Let's get safer. Let's protect everybody. But there's some people that think dudes should play in women's sports. Man. Yeah. Like the one, the high school girl in volleyball is like paralyzed on one side of her body. But they're like, no, let, let guys play in sports, but let's be safe. When guys are playing each other, but when guys are playing girls, yeah, now that's even. Nothing's I don't even want different. to walk down that road right now. But you talk about player safety. One, can we start wearing knee pads and putting mouthpieces in? And we're going to talk about player safety. It's a thing of the past. I go, first of all, I don't want to hear that, that that ass excuse. And two, I've said what's going to happen. I can see it down the line. The robots? It's going to be robot football. Sooner How would later, you feel about sooner that? Sooner or later, all right, the safety... <laughs> of players is going to get so to the extreme that players, humans aren't going to play football, all right? Humans will control robots who play football. Then the safety's out of it. Will that be better? You, you can do whatever. You but can then, rip their arms no, off. You no, can. but then the robots unionize, and they sign a collective bargaining Look, agreement. Look, at that point. Because they're yeah, being we're, we're sued. Anyways, they're being right. sued. No, but, but I watched an Amazon robot. Have you seen Ex Machina? Would people, would people like if it was robots playing each other? Like, if you had... Yes, they would. Like, every safety was the same Do you like time. Real Steel, the movie? Yeah, yeah but, like, dude, but like you couldn't have... The, the That human element is so important because, like, that's the storyline. Nobody's going to no, care not. about R2-D3 from Factory X. R2-D3. Yeah. Like, D3 football. I, I, I think people, like, people will watch it regardless if it's... I think they'll watch it even more. If, if you're telling me, if that thing from that well, let's, NFL let's commercial... Let's everybody out there. NFL commercial, I, I don't know which which one it is, with that huge-ass robot before it comes on the show. I know show, what you're talking about. Fox. A fox. <laughs> all right? <laughs> you wouldn't watch 11 Optimus Primes. Have you ever... Have fight you the Decepticons on the a movie. Saturday at 2.30. Have you guys ever seen the movie... <laughs> on uh, CBS? On CBS. <laughs> The, hey, the but, but like Autobots like, versus Decepticons for the, the SEC. We don't have a guest today. We don't have a guest today. The lines open at 7:15 a.m. Central. Right, 7:15, 8:15 a.m. Eastern. I want to know out there. Would you? Would you love? Let's say Auburn was playing Florida. There'd be no recruiting. No, this isn't going down to so college. It, no, 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 no. And the thing about it is, you don't have to pay them. No, I'm talking about across no, the board. No, that's what I'm saying. They you just don't co- have to no, congrats. Guys. They just collectively guys. bargained, and the circuit well, we'll court judge just said all that pull they have the plug rights. out of the wall. Well, then it just becomes about the player. Like all of a sudden, like all these like sketch and all these other people are like the coaches that like Florida no, State like the, co- the 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 fans. Like there's a league right now. I can't remember some arena league where the fans call the plays of the game. Like what? sooner or later. People will control the robot. It's not like it's gaming. It'll turn into gaming. I, just I, wanna, I want people. I want to know. Ready Player One. Would people. Yeah. Be, I've seen would Ready people Player be One. as jazzed up if they were robots playing on Saturdays and Sunday? I'm talking about all across the board. I'm talking about college football and the NFL. We want to know what you think. One eight five five two three six three two two eight. We're going to get to the chat too here in a second. But David, let's explain to people the rules real quick. The the new kickoff rule. 
Yeah, well, let's, just take a look. Dude. Yeah, let, let's. I can't this explain it because it would take the whole ninety minutes. Yeah, episode. so I'm trying to put my special teams hat on. So basically, they're just running a play. They're just running a play. That's what it is. I always, I always used to explain to our guys: kickoff and kickoff return is nothing but an offensive of and defensive play, just from further away. There's still a run fit. Sure, it's a run play. You have counters, right? You have boundary uh, runs. You know, it, it, you have reverses, things like that. So basically, the, the kickoff team is now starting at the opposing 35, and the kickoff return team is starting at the 30. So it eliminates that drop and that full speed running down, which to me, there's a beauty, right, in, in being able to let a guy run down and work the twists and things like that. Let's just run a clip of this. If you're on audio, that's the best way I can describe it. Uh, this is from the XFL. Let's play it. You can see it's just a run fit. The ball's kicked, depending on where the ball's, ball lands is whether you can return it or not. And it's just, meh. Just a play. You're never going to return it. If There's not going to be touchdown. If that's how kickoffs happen when football was invented. None of us would have a problem with it. Yeah. Again, it's it's the constant changing of the rules and this pursuit of safety that you're just, you're never going to get there. You're never going to get there. And, and, unless it's robots playing each other. Yeah. Like, unless you take people out of the game completely. Yeah, and now with the hip drop tackle, I mean... You can't tackle people. I'm supposed to now like try and tackle Tyreek Hill or are these witches? Like I have to be just perfect in every single thing I do defensively. It's just or how about the big guys? It's an impossibility. How about the six foot five tight ends? Like that's who you're trying to bring down at an angle. Yeah, well, I, again, yeah, I'm just at, true. at at this point, it's just trying to get anybody down is is a challenge. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like again, this is one of the two existential threats we have for the game of football. But regardless if it's robots, humans, aliens, animals. If you want to support, bet on sports, our friends at Bet Online, they got you covered, all right? And they're not changing the rules of the game. They just have the best ones. And you go to betonline.ag right now and you use our promo code BOOSTER, you get a 50% instant deposit bonus of up to $1,000. Sweet 16 starts tomorrow. We're going to be out there in LA. All right, we're using Bet Online. All the team props, the player props. If you're available, if it's possible for you to bet on sports, you need to make it bet online. Not only that, David, and also Blaine, we got NHL. The Preds right now are playing yeah, better. Yeah, don't Major talk about League my baseball, NHL. Better. Flyers, big feet, cover yesterday, feet, boys. Season in uh, in baseball yeah. right now. We got college baseball, the women's tournament. You need to make it bet online. All right, you want to be in the trust tree? Come hang out. Go to betonline.ag. Use promo code Booster. That's B W O S T E R. You'll get that fantastic fifty uh, percent instant match deposit bonus of up to a thousand dollars. Bet online, where the options are endless, and so is the fun. I'll lower the price of the bat, but I'm not budging on the baby pillow. All right, let's get to the Booster Club. All right, Booster Club, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. If you donate, it's on topic. I will read it, unless you're Charles Dossett, then I will read it a couple of days later. I love In that. In your face, Charles. <laughs> right, let's your go face, to Josh Bissett. Josh, what is up? Is anybody ready to admit, or is everyone just going to keep complaining about how shitty football is starting to become? Well, it's... I think it depends on what aspect you're talking about. Some people will, will take that route with college football and NIL and kind of losing the, the localism that we're seeing because of the transfer portal and that it's going corporate. <clears throat> that, to me, has an effect, but that's not a, oh, no, it's an apocalyptic event, you know, where people are going to stop. They expand the college football playoff to 12. We're all going to watch it. Now to 14. We're all going to watch it. But all of a sudden, if I turn on the TV and there's nine players out there and you only get two downs, like, and, and we're kicking a soccer ball through an upright, like, then I've got a problem with it. <laughs> like, at what point do we as fans get to say, stop changing the, the, the internal organs of the game? You move the extra point back in the NFL. That's about my limit. To me, that's about the limit of whether you need to be messing with it more. Like, helmets, Almost. mics in helmets, I'm cool with it. Yeah. I'm cool with it. But, like, all of a sudden, you know, it's one thing if, if you're adding, not to the violence, but to the risk. Throwing a Ford pass when they made that change, you're not mitigating risk. You made it cooler. Like, adding the Ford pass made it cooler and more dangerous. Like, guys getting taken out over the middle, like, back in the day. But linebackers are like, no teeth that work for the Italian mob. Like, but now we're going like the opposite way. I mean, what's going to happen? Like, they're like, listen, we can't throw passes anymore because guys turn into Antonio Brown. 
Well, there's so many things they could be addressing. Like, for instance, can we listen in on the calls from the referee? Like, that would be a great... Yeah, did, that did would referee be, not go to the monitor? That would be a fantastic thing to change in the game, not the rules of what we're yeah. playing. It's almost, it, it almost seems like how far, they're seeing how far they can push it until fans are... Well, it's just all of a sudden... It's like COVID to me. Three years from now, I turn it on, I'm watching Dylan Mulvaney sing Days of Girlhood. Like, Down! The second quarter. Sad Hyatt! Sketch up Biden! Yes! Why wait three years? Caleb Williams will be in the league next year. Yeah, That's dude. true. A lot of questions. Let's go to Steve Parker. Steve, how we doing? The only way to save football at this point is to put those who want to make the game safe into Jake's rocket to space. Or go full Jetson and have robot players. How about y'all just start Star Charles' own league? It can be like the, you know, the, the flag football league. We're already seeing it. Yeah. Go do that. That can be like the new and one mixtape tour of our time. You know, the, the flag football. Y'all have fun with that. I want to watch... You know, I want to watch these monsters run into each other. Can you imagine back in the day if they're the Colosseum, they're like, excuse me, people of Rome. People of Rome, we've made some changes. Russell, uh, Ru Russell, yeah, Russell Crowe will now be using a pool noodle <laughs> instead of a sword. We're trying to protect the Lions. <laughs> All right, let's go to Scott. How can anyone complain about officiating when the NFL keeps changing the rules to make it harder to even ref the game or play the game? I don't disagree with that. I don't, I don't think that's wrong at all, Scott. God, all right. Just wait till this call happens, this hip drop drop call. Oh, wait it's going to cost somebody. Wait happens at the worst And it's going to happen at a third and 12 to like ice stage. the game. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Let's go to Parker. Seeing what Boston Dynamics have done with robots actually convinces me a robot revolution is less than a century away. Less than a century? Is this the real world version of Skynet? What is it like? Y'all know what Skynet football is, football how right? the robots take over? Is football how the robots take over? Jake, do you know what Skynet is? Yeah, it's a Terminator. I didn't no know that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, it's from Terminator. It's like the robot network. I don't think we're a century what away. What if football I is... We're a, a God, I hope we're away. not less than a century away. <sighs> That'd be the worst. It's like, like a, you built it's what... Like it'd be cool for like away. six months. No, it would not be cool. What would it'd be, be cool, cool about that, a robot revolution? Okay, not a robot revolution, but just have a robot you can tell what to do for a little bit. Like six months. See, that's how it starts. He starts becoming conscious. Yeah, I don't want right. to have. I don't want to get to know my toaster. Have you guys? Like, seen that, that toaster, toaster might have a great. No, I want to be like, Gattaca? hey, Lance. Good morning. I heard he's pretty bred. Have you guys seen that movie, Gattaca? Get out. Gattaca. That's a great movie. Thank you, Justin. Jude Law. That's I don't idea. watch anime. If you have anyway. robot, if you have robots playing football, Galactica? there's one real human who's still trying to make it out there, right? And he fights against all the odds. Vince Papali? And he ends up being the best player against all the robots. Obviously, it would have to be first really? gen. It'd have to be first gen before they really get dialed in and they would obliterate David, him. the robots would kill I just, him. I don't know. I'm coming up with great movie ideas over here. Let me I'm tell you about a great movie. Too. Outer Space versus Inner no, no, we're not Earth. Going down this no. It's a winner! No, then write it, Blaine. It's a winner. This goes to Axie, so a fist. Robot sports are only interesting in small markets, and for a limited time, it is the height of foolishness to think that people want to watch machines compete. Cap. I, I hope you're They're right. They're watching Cap. people play, play video Cap. games. I'm with, I'm, and you're named after a robot. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I'm with you. I don't want to watch robots play. Yeah, you do. But here's the problem. Yeah. What happens all of a sudden, you know, the first time, you know, that that robot, you know, the one that, like, greets you in the airport in, like, Tokyo now and scare the hell out of everybody. Why do people like, love football? It's, it's, re it's returning punts. Physicality. Like, That's why people, can you imagine? They say every time you get hit, it's like, a, what, a small car wreck, right? Yeah. Can you imagine two 18-wheelers going you're 80 just, miles per hour? When you're just turning this into a Transformers movie. You're not going to get real-life Transformers. As much as you try. That's what it's going to be. I know that's your dream. But you're saying you won't sit here and watch robots play football. No, I'll Bullshit. let them go watch. Yes, you will. No, no, I'll let them. I'll go watch them fight in an arena. I would love to watch a tractor trailer turn into a robot that fights a Lamborghini that turns into another robot. But at the robot fighting thing, I don't want that to take over football. I would love to be actual, actually be able to go watch that at the arena on a Thursday night, then some high school football Friday, then some college football Saturday, and some NFL football Sunday. Why can't we just have a new robot fighting sport like like Beyblades, but like like next next revolution, evolution, whatever it is? Y'all see where I'm going with it? I do see. I haven't, heard, ba I haven't, I haven't heard Beyblades. This show's definitely not going off the rails. I've heard ba Beyblades in a minute. Let's go to Troy Manson with a $10 donation. Troy, thank you. How the hell is anyone supposed to tackle Derrick Henry with the occasional drop? I don't know. Tackle. You need Iron Dome from Elon Musk. That's yeah. the only way. That's the only way. I don't. But see, to me, it's not even like the big, the the bigger guys 
And I know they're like, well, that's the reason we're doing it is because what trying to tackle some of these guys in space, sometimes you do just got to pounce on them or grab them and like just try and bring them straight down. If I, what, what happens if I'm a defensive lineman that's trying to run down a smaller guy and I've got to dive to grab him before he shakes me? Like, and I naturally just, my weight drops his hips down. Hmm. Like, I, they're saying it's going to be this super specific tackle, but it's not. No, that's the it's problem. It's not. We see this with horse collar. Sometimes they call it. Sometimes they don't call it. Depending on exactly the, well, the hand was two centimeters away from where. I just don't trust him, man. It's, it's um, getting damn near impossible to play defense. But, all right, we're going to get back to the, uh, the Booster Club here soon. Remember, if you donate, we will read that. Uh, at least at the end of it's not on topic. The phone line's open, 7.15 a.m. Central. But, David, let's get in some rapid fire. All right, let's talk about Legereus Sneed. The Tennessee Titans signed him to a four-year deal, $76.4 million. Big loss for the Chiefs in that defense. Yeah, well, you know, is this one of those Patriots get, you know, get rid of them while the, the value's still somewhat high? Maybe if they're declining. I don't think Legereus Sneed's declining at all. I think Legereus Good for the one, Titans. One of the best DBs, you know, in, in the world. Uh, great get for Tennessee. I'm rooting for Tennessee. Yeah. I hope Will Levis is good. I hope Tony Pollard's worth it. I know Legereus Sneed's a good player. Not worried about him. But, you know, staying healthy, that's another thing with the Titans. But maybe with new strength and conditioning, that'll be that'll change. That could be just headbutt lockers the whole time. Yeah, I think this is a great get for the Titans. The only thing I'm worried about, it just always seems like when the Chiefs let a guy go, it just seems to get worse. Um, Tyree killed it, and... Yeah, but he's just that. It doesn't matter. You can put Tyreek Hill on Mars, and, and he'll probably take over that planet so damn fast. I do think this is a great gift for the Titans. We'll see how it works out. You believe in Will Levis. But I'm more looking at the Chiefs and what moves they're going to make, especially on the defense side of the ball. You're not getting any younger, such with the pieces you have up front. So I trust in the Chiefs and Andy Reid, Titans, or you're going to have another mediocre year. I think we can all sit here and agree with that. Thank you. I don't know why you're handing me this. Um, but good gift for the Titans. So Jairus is No, it's on the back of it. I wrote you something. Oh, thank you. Tell me what it says. Oh. Oh, yeah, I knew you were gay. It's okay. <laughs> That's not what it says. It says shut up. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have the videos of Caleb Williams? By chance. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Caleb Williams. Play this, please. See him bouncing? It's, I, man. There we go. Pink nail polish, pink phone. He said his favorite Dr. Go. Pepper was the strawberries or cream one. That's the thing I'm I just, not worried I, about. Every time I think, okay, you know what? This guy, is he's not going to be a superstar in the NFL. The Bears should go a different direction. Then I start to see all the rule changes in the NFL, and I think, no, he'll probably fit right in. couple questions. One, whose keychain is that? That's what I need to know. I'm more it worried is. about the keychain than anything. But it, it, is he holding his girl's phone? Like, or Do you think maybe he's holding his no mom's one, phone? No one ever does that. No one ever holds no. their girl's phone? No. Is, yeah, he, is, right. he, is he holding no, her nail polish, too? Yeah, this yeah. is not a good it look right now. It's not a good look right now for Caleb. Um, Why am I getting Kyler Murray vibes, but, yeah. like... Kyler Murray's not that No, bad, I'm not saying he? Kyler Murray's... Why am I getting, like, P. Diddy vibes? Is that the only one Oh, we'll get to Ooh, P. Diddy. Goodness gracious. That's a weird deal. I, is he wearing lipstick? Is he wearing he lipstick? lip gloss. Hey, is Caleb Williams about to be, like, the first, like... You know, like Michael Sam was like, surprise, I'm rushing the passer and I'm also gay, but nobody really cares because Michael Sam wasn't that good. Then there's that other guy that came out. He's like, I played linebacker and loved it. And also, I'm gay. Look, like, it, is Caleb Williams going to be like the first like gay superstar in the NFL? That's the question. Look, I don't care if you're right. gay or not. I mean, just, I'm just I'm not saying he is. I'm not saying he is. You know? Excuse me. Let's LGBT- give the Bears a 4,000 yard passer. LGBTQB1. Who put that? We that's said the funny. control room saw that on the internet. Oh, we that's funny. Good know. job, control room. That's funny. Yeah. Listen, we love everybody. I, I'm not saying one way or the other. Go out there and make the plays. But I'm just wondering, you think you think you think Taylor Swift is popular? Let let Caleb Williams come out and be the the first like superstar gay quarterback. Dude, it'll be like it'll be like that Ken Barbie movie. It'll be that type of hype. All right, college basketball here. Katie Johnson's going to transfer from Auburn. I thought you guys might have some opinions. Katie Johnson. Oh, oh, Katie. <laughs> Katie Johnson. Yeah, man, it sucks because Katie Johnson to me is like he was one of the catalysts for Auburn. He was a huge part. Now, listen, guys have uh, of the success. Guys have gotten in the portal and gotten out. Guys have gotten in the portal, gone to Iowa, came back to where they went before, like Caden Proctor. 
Uh, you can declare for the NBA draft while you're in the portal. Um, but if he does go, I mean, hats off to you, man. You g- gave 100%. I-, I hate it ended the way it did, but uh, that man did a ton for Auburn and, and you know, helped help make basketball fun again. You know, I hate to see KD leave, but I can't wait to watch Auburn actually run a, a, a real fast break in basketball now. Um, so KD just closed in his eyes and throwing up against seven people. Hate to see you go, buddy. But it I'll worked help. a lot more than, than you I hate to see you good. go, buddy, but I'll help you pack. Nah, I, I will agree. help you pack. That is for sure. Katie, Where do you think he'll go? Huh? Mm. I think he needs to go somewhere like to be the man, like the way Eric Gaines went to UAB and was like the man for them. Like, go like Murray State or somewhere. Go play Grand Canyon. God, great. Katie's got Grand Canyon written, written all, all over him. Go that to, one Katie, then he'll fun. go in a tournament game and hit 12 threes. Yeah, no, he'll go have the tournament of his life. Yeah, against Auburn in the first round. All right, He'll so go play at University of Phoenix. Let's move on he to does. Kentucky. It sounds like Kentucky is going to keep John Calipari. I mean, how could you not when you gave him a lifetime contract? But he will coach. You love, you love the just throwing that in there. What is Cone a loves- <laughs> He has a lifetime contract. Listen, like, how you, there's everybody like was texting me, hey, what's going to happen with bottom. Calipari? What do you mean what's going to happen with him? He has a lifetime contract. Yeah. Well, it's $33 million buyout. Okay. Like, or, or he gets dropped out of a helicopter in the middle of the Vietnamese jungle. And then they just, that was the other part. Look, I, I keep saying this, and I've said it every year. Nobody does less with more than John Calipari. Do I think he's a bad coach? No. Do I think he's getting the most out of Kentucky with the way he's operating and it doesn't seem like he's changing? And I think we're going to hear the same thing next year when another, you know, U- Uber Eats driver knocks him out of the tournament from some obscure university in the middle of the Midwest uh, that, oh, it's freshmen. Yeah, we had... We had six NBA players on the roster, and we lost to Jack Golke. Uh, but we're young. That's it's part of it. I don't think he's going to change. The scariest thing, if you're not a fan of Kentucky, like this, if if you're not a fan of Kentucky, this is the best thing that could happen. Because with Cal, you know what's up with Kentucky. They're not scaring anybody the way they used to. But if they were to roll somebody in there that that like could like re- reach the max potential of Kentucky. Like in, and operate them at the most efficient level to win in college and in the tournament, they dominate. Like they've got, they're always going to get great players. Look at their next recruiting class. They keep losing in these big games, but they keep signing like NBA player after NBA player. This is the best thing for everybody else. I think Kentucky had the money, the thirty-three million, if they had to buy them out. But I mean, they're going to keep them, which I think is good for the rest of of college basketball. I'd agree with that. I mean, if it's Kentucky, it's a it's a Nate Oates at Kentucky. It's a Febreze <sighs> brothers situation, man. Uh, we need something new and fresh in here. And right now, the guy that I would go after is exactly who you just said. That's Nate Oates. Yeah, you just see he's got Nate Oates wins. Man. Buyout now. Nate Oates wins when he needs to win. Yeah. Um, and, and especially when you get to the tournament. And I and his team this year, I love the way the system that he plays. Right. It's it's an up tempo. We're shooting these. We're running. It's obviously harder to play defense with that type of tempo, but especially in the tournament. They play hard. They come together. So I think Nate would be, and I'm not just saying this because I'm an Auburn fan and I want to see Nate Oates leave Alabama. I think Nate Oates is a phenomenal basketball coach. And I think he'd be a great fit, a great fit at Kentucky. Sooner or later, you got to push Cal down the river. and, and, and You get the same result. It, it, I, what, what, what are you waiting for? Like, what, If you're Kentucky and you hire this guy, what are you waiting for Cal to do? It's been this long. He's had the best players, all right, and, and he can't get it done. Thank God, Francis. Well, at what point does Nate Oates need to go to a Final Four or win a championship? Um, I, listen, I'm not crowned. saying that's wrong. We'll like see the what... heir apparent to John Calipari. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's, he's... I, the, how quickly he turned around Alabama basketball. How quickly he did it to me it, is remarkable. And they had that run, I believe it was Elite Eight. They made the Elite Eight. Elite Eight. Um, lost yeah. to UCLA. Yeah, they oh. blew it with Brandon Miller. Um, yeah, but, they had the best player in basketball in Brandon Miller. And y'all got I mean, I mean, San Diego State. It's UCL, UCLA had... Two <laughs> NBA players on that team. Two that are playing right now. Johnny Uzang and, and uh, White Boy for the, for the Cavs. Yeah, but that's not the team. Oh, they they ran through, through my whole household. They'd be Michigan like, you're thinking the, the team Herb Jones. But that's, no, I'm saying, in gen- I'm, not, yeah, I'm saying in general how yeah. far they've been. That's the team they lost to. But I think you can watch Alabama basketball and see how far NATO's taken these guys. Oh, with that. In an extremely quick time. Yeah. So By the way, did you see Georgia Kentucky. beat Ohio State last night in the NIT? Did they? Mike White's got them cooking. Wow. They went and beat Wake Forest. Now, I know the care factor maybe a little bit more with Georgia than it was with Wake Forest, but they went on the road and just beat Ohio State, too. I'm telling you, jo- nothing surprises me more than Georgia isn't dominant in all three of the major sports, mm-hmm. not just football. And it took football, 
you know, having to get the prodigal son, you know, Kirby Smart, Kirby Smart, Weatherford Jones. But they were still really good. They were like, still Mark really Ritt, good, but like, not like in basketball. You look at per capita high school wise basketball and baseball yeah. and football. So I agree with Cam Newton, who's from Georgia, from College Park, but um, like, the it's talent, like, it's, if it's they like, kept it yeah. home. It's like finding oil, man. Yeah. It's like Kirby, Daniel, Kirby just got that oil running. Next thing you know, it's we're, like Daniel Day we're Jones, flying planes Day made Lewis, of gold. And there will be blood. Which, by the way, I watched Gangs in New York the other night. Had once in a while. God, it was so good. Man, someone on YouTube cut together a scene where Daniel Day Lewis from Gangs in New York is talking to himself from There Will Be Blood from two different scenes, and he's having a conversation. They're it's similar insane. characters, kind of. Insane. Very yeah, well that's done. That's such a good movie. All right, two more here. What's going on with P. Diddy? What 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 is I don't, what is going? Blaine's our resident like the FBI raided his homes in Miami movies. and yeah. So he's got uh, two homes raided. Um, he's being allegedly convicted of sex trafficking. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's came out um, from sex trafficking. From, from, this is all alleged. All right, from touching kids to not Diddy gay. Stuff with rappers, holding rappers, you have to do this. I'll give you this if you do that. Stuff with Meek Mill. He just got arrested um, trying to leave the country. Um, he did come out with a statement saying all the allegations are false. That it's a witch hunt right now. But I'm pretty sure what I've heard so far, the evidence is mounting up against them. And it's twist, it's twisted, it's toxic, it's messed up. And you kind of see behind the screen of what, what people will do to be famous. Well, sometimes so, I wonder, like, I look at people and I'm like, how, I just don't feel like this person's talented. Like, how are they this, like, famous? Is it a real thing, this stuff that goes on behind the scenes? Like, people doing these things are like, going through these rituals, just all this crazy stuff. I mean, the behind is real. hard for me, it's hard for me to believe, but like the more of this stuff you see, but then on the other hand, I, I watch people get set up and falsely accused, and then we yeah, find like is out. He the fall, is he the fall guy? Because that's one narrative that's going around. Oh, Diddy's just the fall guy right now because they don't want to. If Diddy's what? the fall guy? For who? If Diddy's the fall guy? Do you know who's We're not really looking in into trouble? Jeffrey Epstein's if, list. Well, they're, well, they're calling him the, the Epstein guy? of the music industry. So they were like competitors, or they ran in the same circles? I mean, Probably a little bit of both. So th they were saying yesterday that he that he flew with his private jet out of the country. Yeah, like he, is, Was there something. any truth to that, or is that made up? Um, I, what I've seen is they they got his ass right before they right before he flew off and arrested him. Yeah. So he's, so under he's arrest. in custody. He, he got arrested. That that's that's what I've heard. Say it. Like, I'm not part of TMZ. What have y'all heard or anything? But that's what I've heard. I need someone to I didn't explain think he was arrested it to yet, me. But I haven't. I don't think he's been arrested. What are you confused about? I'm confused about how. People can mess with kids. Oh, I I'm can't. I can't say. Well, that's a, like, yeah, I mean, that's, like, I'm not even have to explain I, it to me. Like y'all, like they're messed up people, man. Yeah, the, like that video of him with Justin Bieber when he's 10 years old seems a little different now. To me, and if you really go listen to his songs now, him and Meek Mill, a little bit different the way you're gonna digest what they're saying. Crazy. It's. Man. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm just trying to. I just hope North Carolina, Bama overheads. Yeah, and it will. And we'll be there and for it. Did. All right, last one on some good news, though. Uh, McDonald's is going to be selling Krispy Kreme donuts. God, we're fat. In 2026, whoa, 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 whoa. though. Did you see this? Why were you? They gave us a two-year heads up, boys. Wait, 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 wait. Two-year heads up. You mean to tell me McDonald's and Krispy Kreme are coming together? I can just hear it now. Sorry, the donut machine's broken. I... <laughs> we can't fix the milkshakes. How many but now milkshakes? we got Krispy Kreme donuts. Like, listen... Uh, I'm 50-50 I'm on this. One half of me, like the fat kid inside of me, sure. is, I mean, this is amazing. Sure. This is like the Beatles coming together with the Rolling Stones. I mean, this is this is an amazing merger. I feel like this should be illegal. Like, but then the, on the other this, side of me is, now, now we're going to have even more people that complain about not fitting on air. This is the fattest thing I've ever seen in my Oh, no, sure. this is the fattest thing that's We're so fat yeah. as a country. We are fat. Fat, have you unhealthy. Seen those, hey, have you seen those people though that have that have done the videos on the like, hey, y'all need to make the plane bigger. Oh yeah. Like I can't fit on this plane. I Imagine saw me she at like, six oh, foot seven. Y'all yeah. gonna complain about the airplane being too small? No, she's like, she's like, oh, I can't put the uh tray down 
because I'm so fat on the plane. Like here's, 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 I got some very simple rules that I live by. All right, one of them is if you're complaining that the plane's not big enough, like that you're having trouble fitting in between the plane, then maybe you're the problem. Oh, for sure. I'm not talking about somebody that's tall. I'm not talking about height. That's Thank that's you. that's I'm talking about width. Like if you're like, hey, they're having to rub butter on the sides of the plane <laughs> to to push me in here, like and heat it up. Here's what I really need before this collaboration happens. First off, I need Krispy Kreme to turn on the hot light. I've been big five or six times in the last year. I hadn't seen the they hot slacking. light on in my Krispy Kreme. Once. They need to undercover Second of all, that McDonald's, y'all need to fix your own stuff. Fix those milkshake machines. Get your drive through line in David. order. Maybe you go take notes from Chick-fil-A, all right, before you try and collab. That's why they gave a two-year heads up, so you can get in the drive through line now, because that's how long can it's going to take. The milkshake machine good. works. They're just lying. Look, look, you want to oh, know how easy it would be for, for now? You can be like, hey, I want a Big Mac, but instead of the buns, Give me two glazed donuts. It's going to be a sandwich. That's our, a thing our, at the fair. Our glazy Susan. That is a thing, a Krispy Kreme burger at the at least the North Carolina fair. Wow. Well, why do you think DJ? God, we're so fat. No, I think this is fat. great. What? Fat? Meanwhile, China just I, solving math problems. No, China's over there. They're just doing push-ups and math problems and loading. Like, we're gonna put Krispy Kreme on a burger and put honey on it, and sugar. He like, says that. Candy cane. Guarantee he gets and, one. And candy For corn. Week yeah. one. When we walk into Blaine's apartment and there's just wrappers of Big Macs. Yeah. And Krispy Kreme I'm everywhere. gonna eat that. Then you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go work out. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Physique. In seventh grade, I became Physique. bulimic. Not, it's a good word. Mind. Not my fault. But speaking of, of delicious, all right, and bad habits, right? Junk food is a bad habit. If you're trying to break a bad habit, like I don't know, <coughs> sm you know, smoking and, and you want something that's a little bit better for you, uh, but it feels like you're climbing Mount Everest in flip-flops, yeah, we've been there too, all right? But that's why fume, or as I call it, fume is a breath of fresh air. It's not about giving up. It's about switching up. What is fume? David asks, wondering with excitement. What is fume? Just like that. Well, David, it's an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that uses flavored air instead of vapor, so it doesn't have harmful chemicals. It uses delicious flavors like crisp mint, blaine, mint. orange vanilla, maple pepper, and sparkling grapefruit. That sparkling grapefruit sounds really good. Fume flavors are what herbal tea is to soda. Not as sweet and much more natural. It'll help you kick that bad habit. Uh, it'll make it a whole he heck of a lot easier. So you need to go to fume.com slash booster. That's fum.com slash booster, B-O-O-S-T-E-R, fum.com uh, slash booster. You get 10% off with promo code booster, B-O-O-S-T-E-R. That's fume.com slash booster, fum.com slash booster. Fume. I'll yeah, take a mint one right now. Buddy. Give me a mint one. Yeah? I like that one. I'll take a mint one. All right. Let's get to the Booster Club real quick, and then, David, it's time to kick some people off your lawn. Let's go to Cedar Creek. Curmudgeon. Yes! I got that word right. I was kind of confused on it. I'm not going to lie. Coach Cal needs to stop being a player's coach and realize that Kentucky fans don't care about how much generational wealth he helps NBA talent acquire. It's about hanging Banners. Whew. He seems to not be Reach. able to do that. Yeah, I I like where your head's at. I I didn't like the execution of the way you put that. Uh, Cedar curmudgeon is that what it was? Cedar Creek curmudgeon. Cedar Creek curmudgeon. And here's what I mean by that. Yeah, he can still be a players coach. He just needs to go out and get some older players. You're not going to win with a bunch of these freshmen in the tournament. It's just like back with the one and done stuff, right? Nobody was winning the NCAA tournament with all these one and dones. Who was winning it? Old guards. Veteran teams that may have had a mix of some young players, but but Cal's got to, you've got to adjust with the transfer portal. You've got to go get some old heads, which you can get at Kentucky, uh, to mix with, with the, the new blood that you're getting in there that we know is NBA talented. And, and I, listen, I get that one of the biggest draws in getting that the young talent was being able to send in the NBA, just like Nick Saban said, you know, getting players to Alabama, the pipeline was for them to make money through the NFL. Well, it's a little bit different now with NIL and the transfer portal. He's got to go about the, he's got to go about getting different types of players from a veteran to rookie standpoint, if that makes sense. You can still be a players coach. You just need to go get some older players. Did you guys hear this story where one of the um, a guy who runs a, a collectible shop in Tennessee uh, 
at Grand Slam Collectibles, it may actually be in Kentucky, was trying to donate NIL to Kentucky basketball players, but it was having to like go through Coach Cal and never even got to the players. And then the player's NIL manager or agent or whatever contacted this store and said, hey, do you got any NIL opportunities? This was like a year later. And he's like, yeah, I already offered $100,000 for 5,000 autographs. Uh, why, didn't that, why didn't the player ever hear about that? Does this sound like a really dysfunctional situation? And this place had already done NIL deals with the football team. And yeah, y'all better figure it out. Y'all better figure it out. I, I wonder, and I'm not saying this happened in that case, but I wonder in this Wild West world of NIL, how much money's been embezzled by, by certain, oh. certain groups or individuals. It's gotta probably got to be an inordinate amount of money. All right, let's go to Eddie. So Kyle Parr needs to put in an administration position in recruiting. That is what he's great at. He's not great at winning the game. He's not going to do that. Coach. He's either going to be the head coach or you're going to have to pay him the $33 million. I thought maybe that provision they put in his contract where he could be moved to an administrative role starting 2024, 2025 in the athletic department, uh, I thought maybe that's something where he wouldn't have had a choice because, you know, if you give him a choice to be that or get do that or get paid the $33 million in the buyout, if he gets fired, it's obvious which one he's going to take, which totally makes the provision useless, in my opinion. I don't know why you'd waste your time, but you know, I guess people just like to write fun things in contracts just to write them in there, just to have them in there. All right, let's go to Beth uh, Bradley D. Excuse me. says, fellas, I got a question. I've been thinking about this for a while. says, why can't the women do one and done like the, the men's basketball can? Well, it's just not, I don't think there's enough money to... The market so doesn't bear it. People now, especially now with NIL, Caitlin Clark is going to have to take a pay cut to go to the WWE. Or, or is the question, like, is there an actual rule in college? No, I think you can. I think women can be one and done. Okay. I just think they don't do it. If, 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 the, if that's the case, if there's an actual rule that says they can't, that would be interesting to look into. But if he just means why doesn't it happen more, it's just that's the market. Yeah. All right, let's go to a $20 donation from Sammy Caldwell. Sammy, appreciate it, brother. So just because you guys bring it every day, you never phone it in. Really appreciate it. Thanks to I'm all you. Phone it in. And I'll how phone about in. my Florida Gators coming up this year? We're going to suck. Well, guess what? We're going to be down in Florida. We're going to be in Gainesville, y'all. Yeah, we're showing Lady Ballers. Uh, you're going to hear some more and more about that. Uh, very excited about going down there. And interesting to see if anybody's going to protest this, David. That ought to be fun. Can't wait oh. to see it. Yeah, see if they protest 6-7. Yeah, this ain't no walk in the park down here. Come see me in the paint. That's exactly right. All right, David. I want to see you All on right. the lawn telling other people to Look. get off of it. Because every Wednesday, if you don't know, David Cohn is really a you know about an 83-year-old man. And I think I may be actually 83 now? underselling that one. Trapped in a 35-year-old body. He's a father of three, but a great grandfather of all. David, who are you looking straight in the eyes today? And g and off their L. Oh, so sweetly. NFL and MLB rule changes need to get off my lawn. Stop That's tweeting. right. It's a two-for-one special today. Let's start with the NFL banning what's being labeled this hip drop tackle, which is really just a longer way of saying tackle because <laughs> I can't see a distinction. I would pay good money to see NFL owners put on a demonstration of exactly how you're supposed to bring down Derrick Henry when he's running away from you at an angle. I've projected the NFL would be the National Powder Puff League by 2030, but maybe my timeline wasn't aggressive enough. And the league didn't stop there. They also voted to entirely revamp the kickoffs, as we talked about today, which you can see here in this video. Now, I heard people saying this will bring back more excitement to the kickoffs and have a, a more chance for a, a return and increase the percentage of the return. You mean like more excitement before it was tampered with the first time? More excitement like when Devin Hester used to have us on the edge of our seats? League officials say this new format will minimize high-speed collisions. This is football. High-speed collisions are the point. That's why millions of people watch. The purpose of the game is not to ensure career longevity. The purpose of the game is not for 40-year-olds to sign their fifth contract. And baseball, don't think you're getting off the hook with your new rules either. Run this play from spring training. This was called base runner obstruction. Now, I played baseball for over 10 years. You know what we called this? You're out. We called this, you're out of there. Go sit in the dugout and run faster next time. 
With the constant changes at the professional level and the chaos at the college level, I'd just as soon watch reruns of classic matchups, or better yet, I'll just keep becoming a bigger UFC fan. No one is laughing more at these changes than Dana White because he keeps getting richer. So NFL and MLB, it's not the first time and it likely won't be the last <laughs> time you hear this. Get off my lawn. Yes. Or don't don't hip drop tackle me on my lawn. Yeah. Dude, the baseball one's egregious. Get out of the that? Quit like, blocking the bag. Quit blocking the bag. Move. That is an We're out. We're paying you million. Get out of the way of the bag. For over 100 dummy. years. Hey, so, so, so over 100 ask, years, that's an out. So let and, me ask you this. If my glove is hanging over the bag like this. That's not your body. It's not your body. It's not your body. It's not your body. You're your blocking body. the bag. That's your Get head. out of the way. So wait. So wait. This is where this is where you run into problems man, with your logic. You want players to be able to fight during a baseball game, but you don't want somebody blocking a bag? No, I'm not upset about this rule. Like, you can't, from a guy who played baseball, you know this, but guys block the bag and it's the worst shit ever. Part of That's why you start seeing guys going spikes up in the bag. You want to block the bag? We'll eat these spots. Well, get, that's, guess that's that's part of that's th the price of admission. Well, if it's the catcher at home plate and you're not allowed to run him over, what? How else are you supposed to score if he just has the entire base covered up? That right there, that's an out. What if I? You, that's you're, an but out. you're you are blocking the bag. Who is that bringing into the game? That's what I want to know. Is that bringing like a, an 18 year old? Yeah, yeah. Who's, who's like, how like, does who? that make the game? How does that make the game more popular? They're not going to. Baseball's not popular. There's nothing you can do right now to make baseball popular. Well, then why so change it? Baseball's a make dead sport. Then why change it and alienate the people like like the Ben Shapiro? I don't think it's a world, dead sport. I think it's a classic sport. baseball lovers who don't want the sport to change. Because it's not working, obviously. Either you well, go under or you don't want to change. Well, I, I mean, you don't well, always I, have to be scaling. Like, look at the Masters, for instance. Like, the Masters refuses to even change the price of a hot dog. Yeah, they wouldn't even let girls in there. Like, until like, eight <laughs> like yeah, I'm not so scared to start putting the Masters with the MLB. You, you don't want to because that's just a one. That's a one-time thing. These guys play 100. Well, golf, games. golf in general, other than like, I mean, the waste management tournament or something like that. <clears throat> You know, like honoring tradition, keeping it the same. We're not out here trying to get new fans into the game. We're trying to keep the game great for the fans that already love it. Is the analogy? I yeah, I, I, I just feel like the Masters is, is an exception. I mean, right now with 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 golf, golf's changing so much, especially with the Live Tour and all this new stuff that's going on. So golf's changing. The Masters is going to stay the same. That's fine. It's 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 a pageantry. It's a beautiful thing. But I do think in baseball, like you can't you can't block the bag, dog. You can't. Just don't do it. Francis Lindor getting paid how much damn money? Your footwork's good enough to get your ass out of the way. Okay, well, how about well, this see, one? but like, what if the throw pulls you up a little bit where you've got to reach? Now I just got to let the throw go because I'll be blocking the back. If, if you're trying to make the, the argument is not, is it impossible to block to to not block the bag? That's not that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is if you're trying to make baseball more popular, taking away the last few physical acts that there are in the game. You've already taken away running over the catcher, right? We've already got warning tracks that tell you where the wall is so you don't run into it full speed. Like, that's not going to make the game better. Making the bases bigger aren't going to make the game better. If you want to make the game better, bring back running over the catcher. Be yeah. able to block the bag. Or how about this one? How about having spring training games and then regular season games that start overseas and then coming back and playing spring training games before we have official opening day tomorrow? Yeah. Did you guys hear about that? Mm -hmm. Like there's there were actual regular season games yeah. already being played it's in the, the middle of a ever. spring training lineup. Imagine if we did that with the NFL when they go play, you know, the, the like, hey, we're going to play a preseason game in Germany, but it's going to count. Yeah. Like it, it's it, But then you come back and play another preseason it's game. It's just like they're drunk coming up with rules. It's almost like they're a bunch of of drunk ki you know, of age young adults that are at a party that are trying to remember how to play a drinking game, but they all can't remember, like, the rules. That's what baseball's turning into. Wow. That's what it's turning into. It's just the truth. But we want to... I'm, I'm very interested for people to call in and see if they think... If they, if they would like watching robots play football. Like, if the Broncos versus the Steelers were, like, the robots built in Pittsburgh versus the robots built in Denver. Like, now, like, the engineers become, like, Who's our engineer coordinator is more important than, like, who's calling the plays? I don't know. I just don't want to live in that world. I think humans playing the sports better. That's just me. But, all right. Let's go to the Booster Club, and then we'll get to calls. I was going to Ratchet Dewan. He says, the umpire said there will be more focus on obstruction. 
So technically, it's not even a new rule. Well, if you're gonna cut, if you, it, it is if that's if that's not you're out. It's a new rule to me. Yeah. If you're gonna like, I, I don't think we can say, hey, it's not a new rule, but we're just gonna enforce this rule kind of more. Like, no, you're if that if you're safe on that play, to me, you're changing a rule. Like you are, are you are now totally disregarding the way that you used to call it and changing the way that you're calling it. It's like freedom of movement at basketball. Like, well, we're going to, you got to give the guy room to dribble. Like, or if you're in the cylinder, we're going to call a foul. Okay, well, you're, that may not be a new quote unquote rule that goes in the rule book, but you're calling the game different. So it might as well be a new rule. Let's go to Danny. The WNBA requires a player to be at least 22. Really? To have completed their college eligibility, to have graduated from a four year college, or to be four years removed from high school. The, the WNBA requires that? Mm. Okay, so mm. not at the college. <gasps> College level. That's I did, interesting. I did not know that. Mm. I wonder why. Why you didn't know it or why? That's well, well, requirement. I know why I didn't know it. <laughs> I know 100% why I didn't know it. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Because I didn't care. You got me. Um, interesting, though. Yeah. Fun fact. So the sweet baby bird dog. I'll say it again for the folks in the back. Football on the moon. Just Listen. Yeah. One in six, the gravity, 10 times the violence, a win, 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 win situation. I would definitely watch us play on the moon. If they're like, hey, we're going to play the Saudis on the moon, like I'd watch it. I love it. And we destroy them. In football, Saudi Arabia, we destroy them. No, I mean, I, feel, I just wish we had football in the Olympics, like actual, like our NFL team. Like, hey, you're playing Ireland this week. Oh, good. Our team. <laughs> You said the dream team was good in basketball. It would be a murder. It, it would, would be an be. absolute murder. All right, David, let me know when you're ready. He's got a broken Ooh. devil dog. He says, look, fellas, golf is incredibly exciting. Chip-ins, hole-in-ones, watching the final grouping on Sunday. Battle, battle it out. It's incredible. Way better than baseball. I mean, I, th I think it's a better product right now. We'll, you know, we'll see what the Braves do against the Phillies in the postseason, and then I'll tell you about how I feel, feel about it after. All right, let's get to calls. All right, let's do it. I want to go to King Don in Little Rock, Arkansas. King Don, I know you have some thoughts about this new Man, that's a little coming rock. coming to talk about the Packers or what? That's a Little Rock. Uh, I'm not calling in about the Packers. I am calling it. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. bud. Okay, um, I'm calling in about the new kickoff rule. I'm actually not that angry about it. And I'd like to How, explain why real quick. Yeah, it's because you're like, you're like the new generation of – of our like you're younger, so of course you're cool with it. <laughs> well, y'all, y'all the ones rubbing um, mashed potatoes all over famous paintings. So, but not King Don, though. not King Don, not King Don. Don't, King don't hold King Don. Don. Don't hold King Don. I'm not okay. Uh, accountable for. I'll see what he's can we let our resident 16 year old call in at 7:20 in the yeah. morning? Yeah, he's like he's out, yeah right? he's chained to the freeway. Come right on, big yeah. dog. Under the bus, bus gonna be here any minute. Yeah, yeah. Get us with it, man. What you got? <laughs> okay, so real quick, just to explain the actual kickoff rules, because y'all don't seem to want to do that. Uh, the kicker still kicks from the same spot. Opposing yep. team lines up on the 40-yard line. Uh, rush receiving team lines up on the, their own 30. The ball has to land within the 20, mm -hmm. within 20 yards of the end zone, or actually in the end zone. If the ball goes out of the back of the end zone, it's you get it at the 30. If the ball lands inside the landing zone, then no one can move until it either hits the ground or until someone catches it. And what this did in the XFL, and this is why I actually kind of like it, is it resulted in 90% of kicks being returned. Whereas in the NFL, right now, only 26% of kicks are returned. So y'all are arguing, oh, no, we're getting rid of the really awesome kick returns. But there's no kick returns in the NFL. Yeah, Maybe you're too young. Hold on. Young. Maybe you're too want, young to remember I want kickoff gone. Like, maybe you're too young to remember before they tampered with it. Yeah. Like, if you break my leg oh, yeah, and then no, give I, me crutch, No, hold on. I, if you break my leg and then give me crutches, I'm not going to say thank you for the crutches. Don't break my leg in the first place. If you want them to return kickoffs, move it back how it was before. Yeah, the three of us grew up, up watching Devin Hester. Yeah. We were on the edge of our seats. They they Devin changed Hester the kickoff. The, the, they changed the kickoff so there would be fewer returns. And now they're complaining, well, there's not there's enough returns. Enough return. so let's change it again so there's more returns. Move the ball back to where it was and we can have it how it always was before. yeah like that's people forget they moved it up like we went through the play yesterday and what happens when it happens we had the clip today of it 
I just If we sit here and explain every nuance of the rule, it's going to take 30 minutes. Here's the thing. Yes, it resulted in more kickoff returns, but you're missing the whole point of what a kickoff and kickoff return, that's a play. Like, it, what you just saw was a defense lining up at a line of scrimmage. That's just a play. Kickoff and kickoff return was an offensive and defensive play. Yes, I'm not arguing that it wasn't, but it was from so far away that it made it different. All you did now was put somebody basically in the wildcat formation. You're kicking the ball off instead of snapping it, and it is a play. it's a run play. It's a run play, and it's a lot easier to defend, in my opinion, because you're not having to, yeah, you're not able to twist and do it do as much, but they're not able to stack back as much. They're not able to set double teams as quick enough. Why don't you just add another down then and take away the kickoffs totally, except for onside kicks when you want the ball That's back. That's what you want, But right? David brings up a great point. They moved the ball up to, to eliminate kickoff returns because it was, quote, unquote, safer. And now right? they're mad. And now no they're return. mad that people aren't, like, I, that's I, the part you're missing. Yeah, I'm not saying that the kickoff return, I'm not saying this is better or anything. I, I'm saying it's better than what we had, like, last year. I'm not saying it's the end all be all. I think we should move it back to before I was born or whenever that was. But uh, <laughs> uh, I was, it, it wasn't that long ago. God, it feels like that. <laughs> it, it wasn't that long like ago. That. I, we are old. Yeah, I get it. But you want no kickoffs at all. No. Okay. Well, no. then how do you ever get the ball back? Like, uh, Just without take the ball. Ball. What, about, what about what it's doing to onside kicks, King Don? I mean, I understand that it's a low onside play, but, but, but like no onside kicks unless it's the fourth quarter and you're trailing and you have to announce the other team. I mean, I watched Sean Payton on the biggest stage in the world ha- kick an onside kick after halftime for the Saints. They won that Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying it's good. I'm just saying it's better than last year. And I would rather, if they're not going to be willing to put it back to how it was, I'd rather have this than that. Then I will. I could agree with that. Yeah. If that's the angle if you're that, going if, at, to me, that's not. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm arg- going at. you're arg- you're looking at the the silver lining. That was the, that is the optimist way of looking at it, and I'm typically an optimist, but I want the most efficient thing, the most fun yeah. thing, and to me, that is moving it yeah. back. Having the kickoffs there where we're not just kicking the ball in the third row every single time. And playing this game of let's make it as safe as possible, but also can we still like have it be exciting? It's a yeah. losing proposition, and it's a slippery slope, and it will never end because football is never safe. Hey, man, let's just get the offense out there. You know, Let's not worry about it. Come on, offense, offense up. 25, baby, let's go. Here we go. King Dow, we appreciate it, Thanks, man. Hey, King Dow, that's a great it, buddy. Hey, way to start calling today, boy. Right? You enjoy, Hey, you enjoy that peanut butter and jelly with the crust cut off. Yeah, you enjoy you enjoy that encrustable. <laughs> hey, yeah, call in next week, <laughs> all right, man? God. See you, brother. All right, let's stay in Arkansas, but let's go to Nathan. Nathan, what's going on? What's going on, boys? What's hey, up, what's up Nate? Morning. What, a, what, a, what a morning to call in. Can we get these snowflakes out of the NFL? Oh, <laughs> <I> Nathan. Mean, <laughs> speak my I language. Mean, really? My favorite thing on Sunday afternoons before the 7 o'clock game was listen, watching with my dad. What was it, the Sunday special where they showed the biggest hits from the weekend? Yeah. Like, what are we doing? Not anymore. Like, Can you imagine, hey, hey, guys, hey, guys, instead of Russell, Cr- instead of Hercules, or, no, instead of Spartacus fighting these six guys, He's going to play the harp in front he's gonna of He's going to do a y'all. poetry slam. Yeah, while, he's going to do a poetry slam while people just rub tomato juice all over him. Like, I mean, that was the best thing. When you go watch highlights, what is what is the high schooler's huddle tape going to look like now? Oh, yeah. I just pushed him over out of bounds. Yeah, like, I kissed him. You already I hear high it. school coaches talking about this. I talked to high school coaches. I played four down in Georgia, and they're like, look, these kids don't want to hit anymore. And I think that's an important distinction here. Nathan, you're talking about watching the game with your dad and seeing the highlights of the biggest hits. Yes, as fans, we want as many collisions as fast as they can possibly go from an entertainment perspective. But that's not the only issue here. I mean, we're talking about young men. Young men who go out and play football are doing so because there is the risk of danger happening when you play. That's why people gravitate towards the game. I mean, I'm a better human being. now. I'm a better father and a better husband because I played football and had to go through and and think like, man, the, the... I, there are physical consequences are, to the exactly mistakes right. that I can make out here on the gridiron. Exactly. I mean, my soccer season in Mississippi growing up was more physical than what the NFL is now. Well, I well, mean, we were just laying dudes out. Well, to me, like, I, I, like nobody is forcing anybody to play. Like, that's another exactly. thing. It'd be different if we were like, all right, 
well, you've got to play and you've got to play and you've got to do this or, or hey, it's 300, you got to go kill that werewolf in the ice and wear it back as a coat to the village. So if you want to stay oh, here, nobody's asking anybody to I do mean, that. They- you can either play or not play. But if you're going to play, you know the inherent risk and that's what makes it fun. You know how, listen. You knew what you signed up for. It hurt, yeah, it did. And it hurts to get hit, but it also feels great to deliver to deliver the bail. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, it, yeah. it feels great. Uh, the other thing is, is I know I would not watch robots play NFL. You would not league. watch. Yeah, yeah. No. You say that. You say no. that. You say that, and you'll watch. What if you didn't know, Nathan? It's like New Year's resolution. How's he I'm going to do this? Well, that's what I mean. Like, do what this. if we get to the point where it's just it's AI? I mean, they look like us, but they're robots, not like the metal. Yeah, you ever box. seen Bob's game? It's, huh? That's what it is. Westworld? I mean, You're Westworld. Well, like, what if it's Westworld style? I mean, I'm not watching spring, what is it, the XFL. I mean, I go to watch the best players in the world, and what are they doing? They're sitting there during the, uh, the spring season not playing the best football. I'm, I mean, I mean, we, eat their own, but I'm not watching it. So I do you like college you, football? You'll watch the best players in the world, but you don't. You won't watch the best robots in the world. Correct. That's just, thank you, that's Nathan. Just, I, Nathan, I think friends. that's I a think logical you will. way to look. stand on business. I think Nathan. you yeah. will, Nathan. I don't hey, think you're standing on hey, business. Hey, don't buy Nathan. into the robots, capping. Nathan. Blaine's the problem. I think I'm you're. Not, I think you will watch it. it with a big box Blaine's, of popcorn. Blaine's the guy that that walks around the city when the robots take over. He's like. Don't worry, they built us a library. Yeah. Floating. Blaine floating wants you hooked up to tubes. Floating Blaine wants you hooked up to like, tubes dude. eating McDonald's and Krispy Kreme and eating. Oh, he's Paul up like the people off a of Wally. He's gonna eat up like the people off the yeah. Wally. Yeah. 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 Keep saying as much as Decepticons gonna show up at your house. Yeah, it's like why why is, why is my there a cell, military why is helicopter my, flying? Why did my, my house? cell phone turn into an AK forty seven? Appreciate it, Nathan. Thanks, man. Don't watch it, Nathan. Yeah, Don't lie to me. Have a good one. See you, Nate. All right, let's go to Noah in Texas. Noah, talk to us. Yeah, important job. Arc. Very important. Most hey, important morning, job. Kings. What's, What's up, up King? man? Hey, I just want to say, so I do not like the new kickoff rules Thank as much you. as the next person. Um, I do. I did hear Mark Murphy, the PAX president, say that it was only going to be a one-year deal, and then they go back to it. But why don't we just use the preseason for these new rule changes and see how it goes. I'm I'm with you. That's that's what it's there for. Like we we in Major League Baseball, what do they do? They're like, hey, let's try it out in Double A first. Let's see how it does exactly. in the minor leagues, and then we'll then we'll you know see if it translates into something we want to do up there. Why not? That's the time to experiment with it. Yeah. Right. That's like the hey, exactly. it's free, it's fun. Let's experiment. What do I like? You know, do I like this? Do I like that? Here's the question. <laughs> I mean, if you take away you take away the touchback, obviously we are going to have more returns than we have right now. So that that will be a positive. I think King Don is right about that. The question is, will college adopt this? No, please God, no. Will college adopt this new kickoff just, rule? Just, just get the offense out there, guys. Hopefully not. No, stop messing then, with uh, it. Stop messing with it. That's my thing. Like Exactly. What, what happened to the old adage? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now we just try and fix everything. No. We try and look to see, like, please, can something be broken so we can just fix mm-hmm. it? Can we just add some? We're yeah. not that bored. The most popular sport in America. We're over here. Hey, let's make hey, let's massive. Yeah. With it. It's like, let's quit trying to, like, we let's don't need to go get it. Botox every two weeks. Yeah. All right. Let's make, let's we make don't need, feet. like, have you ever seen the person who has way too many, too much plastic surgery? Wow. Yeah. And, and their face look looks like they lived underwater for Yeah, like months. Madonna looks like, oh, <laughs> yeah. From just salt. little subtle, little subtle changes. It's fine. Every now and then. Yeah. Maybe a lip injection right. or. Maybe you're getting your forehead lifted. I don't know. That's a big. It sounds big like blade. it sounds like you're talking to someone right yeah, now. This no, is like no. I'm just, I'm just, this is what a is, little lip injection or getting your lip filler. That's not a big thing, right? Yeah. What, what else? Injection. Thing. Outside I mean, of that's not a big thing. Getting your Thank face you, replaced. Just a little. I'm asking just you. Just a little time. breast augmentation. I'm you to so yeah, like not something big, but just you know. Lip injections can be big. Just adding, you know, getting a boot. Oh, ba ba, ba Speaking out, Junior. Now, Noah, for the rest of your life, you get to say you were on this call. Yeah. yeah. There we go. I mean, the the kickoff should have never even been moved forward in the first place. It's our whole reason. Nothing's be- there's nothing more beautiful than watching the kick return team just make the wedges and everything for the returner. Like, I, just I think we should get. There should be two guys I on the kickoff. The best stacking drill. Two guys on kickoff. One guy on kickoff return. Let's put a cones ten yards apart. 
Go score. Yeah, buddy. you let Blaine be in charge of the NFL. Go score, you buddy. let Blaine be in charge of the NFL. It'll turn into Running Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger within five years. Well, this is one of the issues with trying to create solutions for problems when you don't have really yeah, haven't Blaine. thought about the solution far Blaine's enough the, in advance. The, I mean, the NFL clearly sat there and thought, okay, you know, how can we make it safer? You know, what if what if we just have more touchbacks? So we'll move the kickoff forward so it all be touchback. And then after, I don't know when that was. That wasn't that long ago. You know, but after a large enough sample size, they're like, wow, the kickoff return rate's 23% and it's not exciting. Let's solve that problem. We hey, they're making 99% back. of the extra points. Let's move it back. Like, what well, it's, to me, it's it almost reminds me of, like, they sit there and they have that, like, conversation off of Austin Powers where, like, Dr. Evil wants the sharks with laser beams attached to their heads, but number two can only give them sea bass. bass. And they're like, they're like, listen, we can't make people stop tack, like hitting each other full speed, but we did change the kickoff rule a little well, bit. Well, it's just they don't decide what they want. Either you want player safety or uh, like, it's just, I don't you're know, just it's, full of crap. It's yeah, yeah, like we're going the circular way about fixing things. Appreciate it, Noah. Appreciate Thank it, you. Noah. Thanks for calling in, man. Good luck. Yep. All right, let's go to Pokey Texan in Texas. What's going on, Pokey? Good morning, fellas. What's up, got a, dude? Got a few things, if you don't got, mind. Go ahead. Well, let, let's start with this kickoff thing. You know, the front line guys. Now you, I know all you've done is given ten yards of full steam to guarantee that ten, ten, ten on ten are going to have helmet to helmet contact every kickoff. If you're worried about concussions, you've thrown that out the window. I don't think that's a crazy that's way to look at too. it. You've, you've added the amount of physicality, obviously more returns, more physicality, so that defeats a lot of the, the purpose. And then they'll say, well, we stopped the collision from running from that far away, but that was what makes special teams special. Like, they're from different locations. It's The spacing is different, right? What makes an out-of-bounds play different in basketball as opposed to being able to dribble the ball up, up full court? It's just different. It's supposed to be different. It's a special yeah. play, special teams, not normal play. Hey, guys, let's get the normies, get out there. It's not how it works. All right. Well, before I say something about my college baseball gripe, I, I play defensive end. Every tackle you make as a defensive lineman is a hip drop tackle. Yeah. It's just every one of them. I, I watched my college play or my high school playoffs here in Texas, watched my game last night in double speed. Every tackle that was made by a front seven was a hip drop tackle. Every single one of them. Yeah. And they act like how everybody did, just squares each other up. That? That's not how it works. Yeah. How are you going to call uh, it? I really, like... about, I really called about national coverage of college baseball mm -hmm. is the worst thing in the world. No. Those guys, the the national commentators, don't know anything about the teams or the players that they're calling. They're not even doing any basic research. They're waiting yeah. for something to pop up on their monitor to say they need to take that away. I mean, like this week, uh, I don't really give a hoot about LSU and uh, Arkansas this week, but they're going to ruin that those game or not. I don't know who they're playing. Hell. Uh, I think yeah, you're Arkansas, right. LSU. Yeah, uh, I think because no, I know LSU's college struggling. Commentator Lynn Rollins, I think is his name, the voice of the Tigers. He's mm -hmm. probably got the best call voice in college baseball, but they're going to take that away with national coverage, and those guys are absolutely terrible. Well, you know, we Pokey, we see this a little bit with college basketball with these guys – these commentators that may just do the NBA or, or that don't really follow all of college basketball, they're just big names. And then March Madness comes around and they throw them in the studio and they're just having to read names off a list and don't really know anything outside of, of the, you know, the blue bloods of the sport. I think we have that problem a little bit in college basketball. It's amazing. You'll see these, you'll see people try and, and we probably don't talk about it enough here throughout the regular season. It's just the timing of it's kind of interesting with March Madness, obviously, and then the draft. Uh, but we always tend to get to it the closer we get to Omaha. But I think that's how it is for a lot of people. And and I'll be honest with you, Pokey, I think college baseball is a better product than pro baseball. Absolutely. Uh, one last thing. Do you think the the Aggies are going to clip War Eagle wings this week in the Auburn A&M matchup? Well, I mean, hell, we can't. 
I mean, we, we're one in five right now. But, I mean, Pokey, you know this. In the SEC, you can start out one in five and end up hosting a Super Regional because it's it's so deep if you get hot at the right time. Uh, but Auburn, they're struggling to pitch well and hit well at the same time in the SEC. Not one will show combo. up <laughs> and the other one won't. Uh, you know, and you know better than anybody in, in that league, as deep as it is, I mean, you've you've got to be able to put it all together pretty much every day to have a chance to, to be above 500. But, well, A&M, it's just yeah. those bats aren't slowing down right now, man. I mean, at least from, you know, the last time I checked. So, it's going to be tough, that's for sure. Well, I'm going to go. I'm going to go down and watch these games with my bubble machine. Hopefully, I get to fill up the air with bubble home run bubbles yeah. this week. Hey, but hey, you go enjoy it, man. Drink, you, uh, that's one thing I've been missing, going to sit and watch a yeah. baseball game, dude. Drink a cold soda for me. Thanks for calling in, man. All right. All right. Have a good week. You too, brother. Let's go to Joe in Kansas. Joe, how you doing? Joe in Kansas, Joe. Hey, y'all. How you doing? What's, What's up, up bro? Hey, so uh, first off, I want to start here by uh, – saying that I am no fan of Roger Goodell. Uh, he deserves every bit of hate and being booed when he goes on stage on the draft, especially when he's wiping boogers in the back of little girls. This is a good start, Joe. This is a good start to the call. I like this. <laughs> but the main thing I want to talk to you guys here is with uh, the hip drop tackles. So I do have some stats on this here. So according to Jeff Miller, the head of Players Health and Safety, there were a total of 29,034 tackles in 2023. Mm-hmm. Of those, only 280.8% were hip drop tackles. Hmm. On those tackles, there was 15 injuries or an injury rate of 6%. According to the league, the injury rate on hip drop tackles are 20 to 25 times higher. So if we use 25, that makes it a total of 72 injuries on 28,804 tackles. I understand that the league's decision to ban this tackle, and as long as it's officiated correctly, that's admittedly the biggest issue there. That would be an improvement for the game. But I I don't believe that the hatred for this rule is justified. I think it's being vastly overblown. Well, it's it, look, I, I think if if we're gonna sit here and say that yeah, because I can go down the list of if you eliminate the hip drop tackle, what what's the next most dangerous that they're gonna eliminate? And you're gonna keep eliminating the most dangerous one until there's no way to tackle anybody. There's not an over there's the most there's the safest way to tackle somebody. But a lot of times that is dictated by the circumstance you find somebody in, right? You're not always running straight at each other. You're not always running somebody sure. down. You, you know, it's it's different angles at full speed, and it, it's hard to control that. My problem is when, when they sit here and cite, well, this percentage of them was a, a textbook hip drop, reach back tackle. That's, I, I can understand that. But the way it's going to be officiated during the game is this goes in real time. It is bang, bang. And any time, just like with the horse collar, we see horse collars called that aren't horse collars. We see horse collars that that are horse collars that aren't called. So the officiating of the rule, I think, is going to create the biggest problem because it's going to be bang, bang. And it's easy in hindsight to go back and say, well, they didn't tell you all, all of those, you know, what percentage of those hip drop tackles would have been called when you lifted those percentages True. and what drops what percentage of those hit drops wouldn't be called. So it's like it, every like every flag ever in the NFL. Yes, but this is a much harder distinction. I mean, not being able to tackle someone by grabbing their face mask is a good rule, and you can usually see it even though they miss it sometimes. Yeah. The horse collar one, I can get behind that too. We had clear evidence that if you're grabbing someone from behind, from their shoulder pads and bringing them down, you're popping ACLs and Achilles more often. It's easier to see and officiate it, even though Jake's right. Sometimes you do miss it. These are live refs. They're human beings. Let's bring up the Tony Pollard real, uh, clip real quick. This is the play that, that he got injured on. And also, we can't forget here either, Joe, is these rules almost always have to do with the offense scoring more points. So they can talk about it being about player safety, but yeah, at the end it of the day, it just seems like they want to make it harder to tackle and bring down. I mean, this... Like, I don't understand how else you bring down to- Tony Pollard on this play. Now, I don't know if this was in the statistics. This is what got shown... Uh, for for a hip drop tackle and Tony Pollard was injured on this play. Yeah, I mean, what do you guys think? Well, I, I can't really say ahead. that I know of. I, I know where the injuries came from or all that there. But uh, as far as the, the the hip drop goes, like they're mainly talking about just putting putting the full weight of your body pulling them down. Well, like what? So I'm only supposed to put. Here's what worries me. What if I only put half my weight and I start sl- having to sling people down? Are sitting here and trying to gator roll tackle somebody, which yeah. you work on 
at impossible angles and then I break their ankle. And it's a slippery slope because you eliminate this one, what are they gonna do? All right, let's look at the numbers. What's the next most dangerous tackle? Well, let's eliminate that. All right, now we eliminate that. What's the next? And then all of a sudden, the only way you you, know, you have to use telekinesis to tackle somebody. Yeah. Like it's sooner, just, to me, you're opening up. There is not a safe way to yeah. do this. There is going to be inherent risk. Face mask, I get it. Horse collar, I get it. Trying not to launch, I, I, I get it. But even this the roughing is, the passer, like landing on me. top of the quarterback now, I still hate that one. Like if you if you tackle a quarterback, even cleanly up high in the right spot, the sweet spot where you're allowed to do it, you can't like follow through yeah. and finish the tackle. No, I agree. Sooner or later, we're going to start putting the defensive guys at risk. Yeah, because they're not going to know how to tackle people when it's full. Like, and people don't realize how fast this stuff is moving. Like it it, it is what Jake said. It is bang bang. You are thinking on a point one five-second scale of what you have to do. And defensive player, they are taught to tackle a certain way in certain situations, and we're taking that away from them. So guys are going to start to get hurt. Yeah, to me, it almost feels like they're like, hey, they're like, hey, you need to drink, oh, this. And I'm just saying, using this as an example, I'm not saying it's true. It's like, you need to stop drinking normal Sprite and start drinking Sprite Zero Sugar. And then 20 years from now, you find out Sprite Zero Sugar was actually worse for you than the Sprite was. I'm just telling you, I feel like we're going down this road because you're making... You're going to make it harder for people to naturally tackle people. And when you do that, you're going to have people thinking while they're playing, and that's how you get hurt, right? A lot of times you get hurt when you're half-assing it, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Now you're almost encouraging not being able to use your full force. Sometimes getting hit with somebody's full force doesn't hurt. Yeah. Like, that's a, re that's a real thing it's if like, you've ever been hit or delivered. Like hitting hit. a home run. Sometimes the balls you <coughs> hit the farthest are the balls you <coughs> don't feel Jesus. come off the bat. <sighs> Right, and that, that's hit the hardest and the farthest. And sometimes when you get hit in football, you can get killed in football and not feel it. Yeah. I, I, uh, if it's the correct way. <clears throat> Great call, Joe. Yeah, I, I like what yeah, you're bringing, Joe. I think it's an interesting and, debate. And Joe, will you also narrate my life, please? Yeah, so. Joe does have that great narrate, <laughs> great narrate voice. Dude. And and we all dislike Roger Goodell. We can so many. Yes. Hate, 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 hate. Hey, Joe, we need you, your help here to keep up with the statistics throughout the season, all right? So we can keep track of this and see, like, hey, this is how many they're getting called wrong. This is how many people are getting injured from this. Uh, it'll be a, a fun experiment this fall. I can see Joe with the green I'll visor best, and a but clipboard. I, I can't promise I can watch every single game. No, that's Joe, a you watch Joe, every single game. I don't want to hear it. You'll watch every NFL play. You're going to watch every okay? play. And you will not, call in and talk yeah, about it. Yeah, not just every game, every <laughs> play. watch the Panthers. Yes. Oh, yes, actually. No, we said, we said pro Panthers. football. Yeah. Said, Poor Bryce. <laughs> uh, thanks, man. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Joe. All right, let's go to Brian in Boston. Brian. Brian. Yeah. What's going on, guys? <laughs> What's uh, before up? I get into my point, I did want to acknowledge that it is Holy Week and Easter is coming up this weekend. And I just want to take a minute to uh, give God his praise for, yes. you know, giving us all an opportunity to do what we're doing right now. Uh, it's a great thing. It's a, a breath of fresh air for someone like me to be able to listen to a show like yours, where I know our values align and yeah. it, you know, I hope you, you guys realize, and I know you do realize how lucky you are to, uh, to have the platform you have um, to, to sure. do what you're doing. Cause otherwise we'd be stuck listening to people that, that don't believe Skip. in the same things we believe in. Yeah. Yeah. And don't live their lives in a in a proper moral uh, way. So Brian, I appreciate, appreciate that. Amen, Brian. God just prays for that. Hey, so same here. We appreciate you, buddy. <laughs> um, so with this rule here, the the rule changes NFL, uh, Major League Baseball, all this stuff. Even the caller who was just on, um, it it gets pitched to you in an analytical way, like the way he just did, and he ends he ends the call, and you guys are like. That sounded awesome. That sounds great. And I was listening and thinking the same thing. But at the end of the day, we do have to say no to things too at times. Yeah. And I think we live in a world in a society yeah. that doesn't say no to people anymore. Even though that sounded good, it's a good presentation, you're changing the sport from what it is. Mm -hmm. And you can tell people no. Injuries are part of the game. It's okay. Um, you know, the, the refs are going to make mistakes and get a call wrong sometimes. It's okay. That's going to happen. Uh, we don't have to go back and replay everything to double check uh, and make sure we got it correct every time. Or, uh, you know, we don't have to have to satisfy everything. Inevitably, 
someone's going to leave upset. Someone's going to feel slighted or wronged. Mm -hmm. Um, People are going to get hurt. I lost the best quarterback that's ever played in in the league the year after they blew a perfect season uh, right away in the season. And, And he shattered his knee. And that's okay. He got tackled like that. But then they go and make a rule change where you can't hit a quarterback low anymore. Yeah. And it's like we can we can go back and forth on which ones are good, which ones aren't. But at the end of the day, these people, the, the owners, they're trying to perfect an imperfect, in, in yes. imperfection, basically. You know what I mean? And it's never going to happen. Um, so I, I don't know what the answer is, but I also think we just need to say no to yeah. people that- in general. Some of the best advice I've ever gotten is just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. I, and I think that's that's something that that should be echoed, you know, through the NFL owners. Because again, you know, th- there are there, and I'm not saying there never needs to be changes to anything. I'm not saying that all change is bad, but when you're changing the true essence of something, and maybe it is visceral, it is primal. Of we like watching you know, physical actions take place fast, high flying. Why do you think men's sports, you know, are are more popular than women's sports? It's faster. The guys are bigger, they're jumping higher, they're throwing the ball harder. Why was the steroid era the greatest era in baseball? Because Mark McGuire was hitting him in the Big Mac land. And Sammy Sosa was hitting balls that disappeared. Like it just, there's something about it. It'll always be that way. Like, no, but there's a reason why we're not all going to the library to watch somebody read good. Yeah. Today, We're like man, I can't wait! I can't wait to go watch! I can't wait to go watch Crispin read that book on you know how Bark's made. But also, kids, still read your book. No, read you books. Know, Reading's parents. good. I'm just saying nobody cares outside of you, but like read good. I'm down with that. Brian, that's an awesome call, man. That is Thank an you, awesome brother. call, brother. Appreciate it, Brian. We appreciate you. Go get Jane Daniels. Thanks. Yeah. All right, let's get one more here quickly. Trace in Alabama. We got 30 seconds, brother. What's Trace. up? What's going on? What is up? Talk hey, to I, was, us. Uh, I was calling in about the rule change. Yeah. Uh, it feels like they're trying to soften the game down for a, for maybe in the future to maybe get women in the game. Maybe not at the <laughs> pro level, but if this trickles down to the college, I can see it there. Hey, look, they already tried to sneak It'll, Sarah Fuller in there. She won special teams player of the week for kicking a squib kick. <laughs> It'll never happen. You, like you see, Kayla Williams. Yeah, you see, that's what I'm saying. That's, Dude, if, she, if if there's a chick out there doing that, come on. Yeah, if, no, <laughs> come yeah. on. If you can do that, then come <laughs> on. But <laughs> it'll it'll unless they have flags, it'll <laughs> never happen. Well, they already have Boy, those leagues. They just had a man win a swimming national championship in women's. Uh, no, mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I get that, but, but I don't think can, there's going to be women coming over here playing left guard can, for well, the Ravens. Look, have you ever been? You ever been to Iowa? Um, no, like. Look, damn. That's um, wow. That's what I'm just women saying. in wow. Iowa. Hey, the, he I'm said it. just. So, he said yeah. it. Don't come out. That was me. Jake for anybody on Jake audio. Crane okay, that was that. Jake Crane. What I'm <laughs> saying is, will we uh, will we have a league? We know what you're saying. If you think about this, what if they did like a like a, a cowboy situation, like a league where it's like men and women can play like tackle football together? Can you imagine? It wouldn't last three days. Like you let the women, women do. Die. The only way you could do that is if you let the women do steroids, and the men can't. I still don't. Think. That's, That's the only way. I Other I, I women will never be in the NFL or college football. No, nobody's yeah. saying. I'm not saying that women we should be in the in NFL. NFL. Yeah, man, yeah, you can go kick or hold or pray. I'm just, I just, or, I don't know, that. but I'm telling you, like, we'll never see. All right, we'll never see. A woman playing stand up the end. No. We'll never no. see it. That, can you imagine? Unless hey, we're playing flag Cliff football. Is, Cliff is, and we'll come back in about 10 years. Okay. Yeah, All right, we'll, we'll see. Clip. We'll, see no, we'll see. No, we'll see. Like, robots can you imagine before like we see the women Steelers, in the like left guard, Stacey Wilkins. <laughs> left guard, UNC <laughs> Wilmington. Number 1237. <laughs> Gorlock. Yeah. Appreciate she couldn't it, fit in the plane, but she fit on the roster. Great hey, call, Trace. Uh, one more thing. That, Go uh, ahead. I called in earlier about college baseball. Uh, they, just, they just changed where you can't even bat flip no more in college. You can't what? You can't flip your bat if you hit a home run. Oh, I thought you said you can't bet on it anymore. See, that's like, that's what? the stuff. Oh, that yeah, me see, off. you really want to piss yeah. everybody off. And look, I'm an old school baseball purist, but I like a little bat flip. There yeah. needs to be some animosity. There's nothing like hitting a tank 
Yeah. Taking 10 seconds to flip watch Flipping the bat and bat, finding the best flip girl in the bat, running the, the first, stands and then and go up here next to the bat and getting spidered in the middle of the back. Yeah. So it makes baseball American. great. Yeah, there's something American about that. Appreciate you, Trace. Great call, Trace. Trace, thanks, buddy. <laughs> oh, God. Speaking of hip drop, every time I get up at the end of the show now, I'm getting older. My hips don't lie, and I'm starting to feel it now. Um, all right. Tonight. What? Not to do. What are you what laughing at me about? Because probably you're singing Shakira. Probably that's it. It's the remix. <laughs> um, it's, by, it's by some really manly man. By some chick in Iowa. Yeah. I didn't mean that all girls in Iowa look like that. I was just saying. Kevin, didn't that sound like what he meant? That sounds like what it was. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. They're in Alabama. Go to a super Walmart and say I Alabama told, past 1130. See, and I'll make this quick, but when, I, when I got one of my uh, coaching jobs in the Midwest, we we're sitting at the table talking about recruiting. I can't remember what the head coach asked me, something. But I was like, yeah, man, it's usually the farther you go north, the uglier the women get. Yeah. He's not, like, oh, cool. I'm from uh Yeah, he's from like, my wife's from Maine. I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm leaving. What a bold thing to say. I didn't think no about it. Yeah. That's my brother. God, didn't think well, about it. Yeah, he's like, my whole family. Is which is false. That is not true. All right, guys. It is. Yeah, that is not. There's beautiful women all, all over, over everywhere. Especially you in the Booster Club. Y'all yeah, are especially y'all watching right now. Y'all are the yeah. best looking ones. All right. UNLV, Seton Hall, over 141. Please, God. So minus 108. Then, VC who? VCU. All right, they're playing at Utah. Sorry, Sister Riggs. I don't have them winning, but I have them plus seven. That's at minus 112. What do you got, David? 0-2 oh, yesterday. I'm betting that it won't happen again. Lightning minus 115. Sabres minus 135. Let's turn it around, right? All right, Gamma. one and one yesterday. You'll give me Tampa Bay. I'm on minus one and a half. I'm feeling one of those late goals. Okay. A little goalie pull. It's going off at plus 210. They give me the Sabres. Ooh. Money line, minus 137. Bet Buds? Baseball just started with Bet Buds. Bet Buds? Ace is, Ace is going Come to A. He wants the Nuggets. Minus seven and a half. It's going off at minus 115. And then the... Ha, ha, it's going to minus six and a half at minus 115. Got it. It's just nicked you on the way out. Huh? <laughs> Let's get a $2 donation from Justin Alferrer. Justin, what is up? Jake, women are of Iowa or women of San Antonio? No, uh, look, there's good-looking women everywhere. There's ugly people everywhere, men and women, even even Stevens. Let's go to a $2 donation from Steve Miller. Love your band. Um, ballerina men now can play football. I said that wrong. Ballerina men? No, what's the B-A-L-L-E-R-I-N-A. B, so Isn't that a again? school? B-A-L-L-E-R-I-N-A. Ballerina. Is that not ballerina? Is that ballerina? Yeah. I'm thinking of Bellamine. Okay. Ballerina men can now play football. You're thinking football. of Bellarmine? Yeah. What? what? Baller, ballerina men can now play football. What does that mean? <laughs> that that, that if you're in that... a ballerina now, you can, I mean, look, a lot the of football. Look, I, a lot of fo- you'd be surprised the amount of football players that took ballet a little yeah. bit growing up for footwork, I um, mean, balance. A lot of like them. A lot, I, I, I wasn't did. one of them. Me. I was too. My dad put, like, I had to do it for like four or yeah. five. No, I said but I Blaine wasn't. still does it. Huh? Blaine's like, well, Blaine's like Mark Wahlberg there. off Step Brothers. He goes in there. You play what, quarterback. You, you were already a ballerina. Yeah. Y'all already pretty much. You don't think I can enough. dance, Daddy? Yeah, I don't want to hear it. You just dance there, little hard you're just out there singing Shakira. It's dance my heart you're out, Paul. In, you're definitely in that choir, aren't you? I know. I really that? can't talk because I wore a different colored jersey to practice. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all basically went to ballet practice while the rest uh, of Let's like, go to a ten donation from Steve's trading card frenzy. Stevie, what's up? The NFL wants to avoid another CTE thing coming down on them, but they want their game to be exciting. They can't have it both ways. Either deal with the injury risk or avoid it. They can't do it. Good point, Stevie. Five dollar donation. Last one of the day from Ryan Gade. Ryan, appreciate it. Need some unbiased advice. The sports shop in the local mall is having a sale on MLB jerseys. Whose jersey should I get, Harper or Schwarber? Good. Everybody has a Bryce Harper jersey. Give me the Schwarber jersey. Kyle Schwarber. Need to be different. Kyle Schwarber, you are out of here. Yeah, if you can find one of those cream Braves jerseys, get it. They they, they did away Ryan with the Ryan ain't getting no Braves, Braves jersey. He's a Phillies fan. I'll send you one, Ryan. Just don't get a Nationals. Jersey. All right, Paul. Do you like the new NFL rules? No. 74%. 74? You think there's 26% of people out there like, like the it? NFL rules? That don't mind it. I'm going to be disappointed one of them. if it's under 90. It has to be 90. No. 90%. Exactly? Exactly. Who? But who's the 10%? I can't tell. I will find them. 
Yeah. We'll find them and they will be punished. We got a special set of skills. We will find yeah, them. Being a shitty parent. All right. Oh, feels good to hit one on the head. That was nice. That was nice. It does, well doesn't done. it? I wish you could do it in the NFL now. But you can't. Appreciate you guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, got a great show for you tomorrow. And we're going to be live from the Sweet 16 Friday morning. So somebody get excited. Somebody get emotional. We're about to have a great time. Appreciate y'all. And like the chances of the NFL not being hypocritical, we're going, going. Oh, oh. I overthrew it. We're not gone. Good, and I'm pissed. Delivery.